Hello everyone, this is part two following on from Sunday's video where I altered a book cover um, with a view to making a nature journal. So this is the book cover so far um, and for those of you that are watching this and haven't seen part one, I'll leave the link to part one in the description box below so that you can see how I altered my journal. Um, but I ran out of time and said that I would do a part two showing um, how I made my signatures so let me just take my signatures out and just show you um, or remind you what the cover looks like so far um, this was just a really tatty old um, book cover um, that didn't have any pages um, really really tatty and I just wanted to alter it and it was a project that was based on the mood board challenge that we do each month in the Facebook group and I'm just really pleased with how this turned out um, so that's what it looks like um, I've kept the end papers exactly um, as they were because I've just got this lovely writing on here and just you know this speckle um, grunginess you know mold and mildew it smells absolutely fabulous where at least I, I think it does anyway my kids would um, disagree with, <laughs> with with me um, but I just want to um, insert my signatures now I wanted to use some of the eco prints that I did last year um, this time last year um, and this is what I've got so far so I just want to talk through how I've put these together and how I'm going to insert this into my journal to turn it into a beautiful in my opinion finished book and so here are some of the prints that I did last year. I mean, you can see that once I started, I just couldn't stop. The results are just so beautiful. Um, it's Marta Leposka's fault. Um, she put up a video and I just thought, wow, that's amazing. I've always thought that this um, kind of process was complicated before. But, you know, in true Marta style, she just simplified everything. And I just thought, I've got to give that a try. And, um, you know, well, I was just completely hooked. Um, so let me just show some of the results. I mean, this one here was done on um, cartridge paper just absolutely beautiful these are fuchsias um i've got all kinds of leaves as well some of these are done on mixed media paper i think this is mixed media paper here as is this one um some of them are just done on regular copy paper and you can see that these are a lot more fragile they've um torn at the edges um but if you're interested in doing this kind of thing there are just so many videos um just key in in eco printing i'll leave the link to my video as well showing um, the process and sharing the ingredients that I used as well to get some of these results and that will be in the description box below for you um, but I said that I would share a video um, showing what I decided to do with these um, and I want to use some in my nature journal now I've taken a few days to have a think about how I want to use this nature journal. Um, I wanted to display some of the beautiful prints that I ended up with. I mean, just look at some of these. I mean, they are just stunning, absolutely gorgeous. Um, so rather than them being tucked away in a box, in a drawer somewhere, you know, I just wanted to be able to see them on a regular basis. Um, we also did watercolour um, August last month as well, um, and I enjoyed using watercolours so much that that's something that um, I want to practice um, more with as well so I want to include some watercolour paper here. Um, some of these are in fact most of these are done on mixed media and watercolour paper as well so you know I might even add more watercolour to some of the prints that I've already got. Um, I really don't know but um, you know I've got a plan in my head now as to how I want to prepare my signatures. So these are the signatures that I'm planning on using in my journal. There's three of them um, and they're all sort of the same in terms of, of layout inside um, just because, you know, that suits my kind of style. I like the, the, the formality um, of, of that. Um, but let me just um, talk you through how I've put them together. 
Now, some of my favourite prints were done on mixed media and watercolour paper, and I did them on um, single A5 sheets. So I needed to find a way of combining them into um, a page so that I could insert them into my book. Um, so let me just talk you through how I did that. So these are how my pages looked before I um, put them together. Um, so the prints were done um, on both sides, just absolutely beautiful. I think this is mixed media paper here so I decided to use um, some hessian ribbon to bind them together it comes on a reel like this this one here is two centimeters wide which is about three quarters of an inch you can see that it's quite ruffled and irregular so I ran an iron over this um, then I cut um, a piece to size um, just slightly longer um, then in my case I applied glue stick to the edge and just temporarily stuck that down like so um, more glue stick to the other side and put that down um, then I applied glue stick in the centre and applied another piece over the top and then I ran that through my sewing machine. Now for those of you that um, don't sew or don't have a sewing machine or have a fear of a sewing machine like I used to have I'm going to show you how to do it with glue. So all you need is some double-sided tape. In my case, I am using the red double-sided tape just because this stuff is really, really strong. Um, I've never had a problem with um, any of my pieces um, coming unstuck. So you just need to apply the tape like this um, to both both sides. So you can see I've applied my red tape um, front and back um, so that's how it's going to be attached. Um, so let's do this one side at a time. So bring in my ribbon and so I'm just going to peel off um, the backing of this side here. Oh come on you. There we go. And then I am just going to carefully um, place this like that and I'll do exactly the same with this side here so peel my tape off and you want to leave a gap um, not too much of a gap um, but enough so that um, you know you can fold it nicely into your journal you can see here that that's not um, perfectly even but you know that's fine then you need to take your tape off both sides here and apply another piece of the ribbon over the top so let's have a look there we go and then just press press that down and that's all there is to it so you know if you don't have a sewing machine or you're fearful of a sewing machine it really really doesn't matter um, and then just trim that to size I like to leave um, just a, a little bit at the edge. Um, you can do a better job of this than me. You can see that, um, you know, mine isn't even on both sides, but, um, you know, it is on my, my other piece. But, you know, that shows you how, how to do it. And so that um, is your, your page. So this is how they compare. That's the one I've just done a minute ago and this is the one that I've run through my sewing machine. Um, I like the addition of the stitches but you know really you can see it doesn't matter. You get the same kind of look. So I'm just using these as the outside um, covers to my signatures. So here's the ones that I've sewn, um, done in exactly the same way as I've just shown you um, here. Um, but let me just show you how I've put my pages um, together. I've got the outside page here, so that's what um, that's what that looks like. Absolutely beautiful. Then I wanted a piece of watercolour paper. Um, this is 100% cotton um, watercolour paper. I'll show you um, the papers that I've used in a second. Then I wanted another one of my eco dyed papers. This is just an eco print done on cartridge paper. You can see that this is taller than the outside cover. I personally really like that because I just think it um, adds dimension. Um, then I've got another piece of 100% cotton watercolour paper that's even taller um, again but just narrower um, and I just like the way that, um, that this looks. Um, 
so I'm putting that in there and then finally just um, a piece of cotton rag paper that's um, that's much smaller that will go in the centre and all of my signatures are done in exactly the same way so let me just show you this one here um, again we've got the outside page here that's what um, that looks like absolutely beautiful um, a piece of a four watercolour paper folded in half oh what's that piece of um, glue by the looks of things let's um, take that off um, so that will go in the centre there um, then another one of my eco prints um, I mean just look how gorgeous um, these are so that will go there um, a taller piece of um, watercolour paper um, and then a small piece of cotton rag paper um, and the third one is exactly the same so let me just show you how I'm going to insert these into the cover so this is how my um, signatures will slot into my journal and I'll take my time just making sure that um, they're lined up it's even top to bottom um, and that's how it will look it just looks gorgeous absolutely gorgeous already um, and again let me just show you these I've tried to make sure that you know they're all lined up um, evenly um, just because to me let me just show you that way around it's more pleasing to my eye but you know you might not be as particular as I am it's just an awful trait that I have so I want to show you now how I'm planning on sewing these um, to the spine of my journal. So I've got here a regular piece of copier paper and I've got um, the tape that I used originally for the um, outside of my journal cover. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply um, a piece, oh gosh this is so sticky, um, a piece of tape um, to this paper like like this and I'm just going to lay that down um, and then I'm just going to trim it at the edges so that's how that looks um, an alternative would be duct tape um, perhaps or you could even um, glue a wide piece of hessian down to a piece of paper um, so you know lots of alternatives um, for this um, now my journal measures I think it's 24 centimeters yes it is um, just over I'm going to cut that to 24 centimeters just so that it's slightly in from either end and you know isn't poking out of the sides so I've cut that to 24 um, centimeters and now I'm just going to trim either side as well so this is what um, I'm left with um, I'm going to take the signatures out of my book um, and I'm going to lay this on top here and I'm just going to centralize it um, like this and you can see that I'm still going to end up with some of that lovely um, butterfly tape um, either side here um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the grooves just to run my finger down like this um, and I'll do the same the other the other side and that's going to be the perfect um, guide and then what I can do then is I can fold this and I can use my bone folder, where's it gone, um, just to make the creases more pronounced. So we'll do the same here as well. And so I just need to um, check that that's going to work in my journal. And that's going to be um, perfect. And so that will um, go in there, something like that. Um, so let's work on attaching the signatures. Now I've got three signatures um, and you can see that this middle part here measures two centimetres and so I am going to dot a line here at one centimetre, um, then another at um, half a centimetre and one and a half centimetres and I'm going to put some um, guide marks all the way up. Like this. Um, we'll do some more down down here 
one centimeter half a centimeter and one and a half centimeter and then I'm going to draw myself some guide lines let me stand up again so that I can um, see and I don't get my head in the way so I'm going to draw a line across there like that a line here across the top and another one at the bottom and so these are the lines where the marks where I'm going to sew my signatures in then I need to make a mark in the center um, of course my strip measures 24 inches so I need to make a mark at 12 um, then at 6 and at 18 as well um, and then I'm just going to draw lines across like this um, you could do them higher up if you wanted to um, I'm just doing this based on the size of the papers that I'm using and I'll show you and explain in a second um, so that's my basic template so I'm going to take my ruler and line it up with the first set of score marks and it's difficult because I've got a, a shadow because of the daylight running out and I'm just going to run my ruler along like like this um, can you see and then I shall just score it with my finger and then I'm going to take my first signature so have a look and see what order you want to place your signatures in this one here is going to be my first open it out into the middle and then you can see here that I've marked top um, as well um, and that's in, that's important and then I just want to make sure um, that I grab my book um, and that I line line it up like with the top of the, the, the page and then I'm just going to poke the holes through to my signatures like like so and I'm going to use an old phone book you've seen me do this before and carefully go to my first hole I want to make sure that I don't move this and I'm just going to poke all the way through there we go and once you've got one um, the rest is easy so do the next one and the next there we are so that's the first one done like that and you can see that my holes have gone right through to the other side which is um, perfect and I'm just going to clip that in place with a really large um, paper clip and so I'm going to do exactly the same thing then with the central um, line line it up with my ruler like like this and just make a fold a fold line and then I can fold that over and score there we are and then I can take my middle signature which in my case is this one here and I can do exactly the same thing I can just line that up I need my um, book back where's it gone just to make sure that I get that in place and to make sure that everything is in the right the right place Now to make sure these line up properly, I'm placing my signatures side by side and just making sure that everything is in line. Um, and then if I open this out, I've just made um, a line where it sits at the top. So I've just put the holes in my third signature and you can see that on all of them, I've lined them up with a mark at the top just to make sure that these are all in the same place. Um, so I'll just keep my fingers crossed that I've done this correctly. And there they all are. So I just need to um, clip this one together um, with a paper clip as well just to hold it in place and then we can start sewing 
So now it's time for me to sew my signature in and I've got some cotton um, hemp thread here. This is um, waxed thread, um, 0.5 millimetre and I've cut it um, about three times the length of my page. Here we go. They're all thereabouts. Um, and of course I need to have my spine this way up just like this. Um, so here is my first signature and I am going to go in through the centre and then I need to find the first line of holes again go in through the centre like so um, and leave myself a tail. Then you are going to come in through either the top or the bottom it really really doesn't matter um, so here we go let's see if I can um, get this through this is the hardest part getting everything to line to line up and you might need to sort of prise them apart to find all of your holes here we go there we are um, and then I am going to go back through the bottom hole here So again, you just might need to fiddle around and try and find your holes. There we are. And find the bottom hole on your strip, your binding strip. There we go. There we are. And then you need to come back in through the centre. We can tighten this up um, a bit later. So back in through the centre and once you're through you're just going to um, pull that nice and tight um, and then you can see here that I've got both of my um, pieces of cotton um, on the same side. You need to poke one through the other side and then pull them in opposite directions. Give it a tug, be gentle because you don't want to tear your paper um, and then you need to just make sure that it's um, nice and tight and tie it in a knot. So one, two um, and that's it. And then you can just um, trim that down um, to fit. Um, I don't want particularly um, long tails. There we go. We'll go with that to start off with. Um, and then on to the next signature. So again, I'm going to um, cut some thread three times or so the length of my book. There we go. That will do a bit shorter. I don't want to um, waste it thread my needle and we're on to signature number two. So again I'm just going to come in through the centre like this and then find the central hole on my spine which is just here. Leave myself a tail then go um, through one of the ends. Let's go through this one, this one here. And then you've just got to try and find the holes in your signature. And as I say, this is the fiddliest and um, hardest part. And you've just got to fiddle around. In fact, I can feel that coming, coming through already. There we go and pull it out through the other the other side and then we're going to go back in through the, the top and find the top hole in that piece of binding like this and then of course we need to come back in through um, the center again make sure you've pulled it nice and, um, and tight and then we're going to come back in through the center like like this and again once you're through you just need to make sure that you've pulled it nice and and tight um, check on the other side that it's nice and um, snug as well don't pull too hard as I say because you don't want to tear it um, and tie a couple of knots
And then finally, I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the third signature. So in through the center, let's find the center hole here. Here it is. And I'm just going to repeat the whole thing again one last time. So we'll go back through the bottom here we are and so I just need to locate all of those holes this is the hardest part and um, I do find that I have to take the pieces um, apart and just find them individually here we go this one actually is easier that's gone through really nicely and then out through the top So through the top hole here in through the center let's just um, even that out we've got a bit of a kink so in through the center like so and so this is what um, I've ended up with. I've got my three signatures here attached to this green piece of cloth. Um, they're all sewn in nicely. They're all nice and even. They line up nicely too, there or thereabouts. They're not perfect, but you know, that's fine. Um, and so now what I want to do is apply some glue to this piece here so that I can just slot it um, into the spine. So it'll slot in something like, like that. So I'm going to use my glue of choice um, in these um, situations, which is Fabri-Tac, because I know that it's nice and strong. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, it dries permanently um, and it's not going to lift. So I'm just going to apply a really nice layer of Fabri-Tac all the way um, over this piece of fabric over the back. Make sure I apply plenty to the spine in the center here. Squirt, squirt, squirt. And of course I want plenty to the edges as well. Okay, so I've got plenty of glue in place. And so I'm just going to try and line it up as best I can. And then of course, I just want to squeeze it um, into, into place. And this is where you need to really concentrate and make sure um, that it's glued in exactly where you want it. So I'm just tucking it um, in here like this, top and bottom. And then I can open it up and get my bone folder in there and just make sure that we press everything down. Now, this is the fiddliest part um, for sure because you need to make sure that you get your bone folder in there and you press down into those creases and you make sure um, that you've pressed that fabric um, all along the sides because of course you need to get this to stick. Turn it over, let's do the same. Um, oh, hold it up like this and again press down into the creases and this is just patience this is the fiddliest part but um, you know well well worth it and make sure that you press down as well to make sure that it's firmly attached along this edge here so here it is and you know I've just really taken my time just pressing down with my bone folder and I've left this um, for a good hour or so um, just for the glue to set and harden. It looks really neat, I'm happy with that. Um, but I just want to do one final finishing touch. You can see here that um, the cloth has shrunk away on the side. So just to beautify it and to disguise that, I'm just going to add a piece of this flower trim here. So you'll still be able to see um, the butterfly washi tape there, but it would just disguise that line um, and just finish things off. So I'm just going to cut a piece of the ribbon to size. 
um, so we can snip it here like like this. Um, I need to decide which is front and which is which is back. There we go. That's the that's the front. And so again, I'm going to apply some fabric tape. Let me just get a piece of deli paper, and I'm going to go easy on the fabric tape. Fabric tape again. I'm just going to apply a small dot in the centre of each of these, just so that I don't get um, too much bleed through on my lace. I'm not going to weight it down this time either. I'm just going to press with my fingers. So a little blob to each of the flowers like, like this. There we go, that's enough. Um, and then carefully, carefully, does it Nina? Oh, come on, this is the, this is fiddly. And then I'm just going to apply it to my edge. Oh, come back. And I can stretch this out a little bit as well, just to make sure that um, it goes all the way, all the way down. And you see that's so much neater. So once you're happy um, with the positioning, just press it down gently with your fingers. Um, and again, you know, I keep saying Fabri-Tac dries really, really quickly. So I'll do exactly the same thing with the other side. So here's my finished journal. I cannot tell you how pleased with this I am. I'm thrilled to bits. Can you hear how excited I am? Um, the first one I've ever done with an altered um, book, sort of, you know, a proper journal like this. I've made them before, um, you know, using cardboard boxes and that kind of thing. But I'm really, really pleased with how this has um, turned out. It's not perfect. And I'll show you the areas um, that, you know, I would like to do better if I did um, another one. I'm really pleased with the way that I did the spine. Um, of course, I could have sewn these signatures straight through here, um, but, you know, if I'd have gone wrong, it would have been visible on the outside and then there's no going back. And I just like the fact that that's smooth um, and that everything is concealed. So that, to me, has worked really, really well. I would highly recommend this Webtex military um, cloth. Somebody recommended, it was when I was doing um, my junk journals with cardboard boxes, recommended some um cream colored cloth and i looked it up on amazon at the time and it was really expensive and then i came across this um military cloth and thought well actually green is quite um, a practical color so decided to go with this i think it was about eight pounds for um a roll there's got to be 50 um meters on this probably it measures two inches wide it's very very sticky and the reviews were absolutely um excellent for bookmaking so that was why i chose what um what i did um, so let me just show you. Um, so of course we've got the front and back cover um, and that's what it looks like. You've seen, seen that before. Um, and of course I decided to keep the end papers as well just because I love the pencil writing that was on the inside and all the mottled um, marks just from age. That really appealed to me. Um, so let me just show you the signatures. I just love these. I'm so happy. Um, just let me um, explain again. Of course, I ended up sewing these together. I showed you how to do this. Um, it looks absolutely fine if you decide to use the red tape instead. So if you haven't got a sewing machine, don't think that um, your project would look um, inferior. It looks just as nice. So, you know, don't be put off um, by the sewing that I've done here. So let me just flick um, through. Of course, I've got lots of watercolour um, paper in here. I'll show you what I use used um, watercolour paper wise. I've cut all of the strings to the same size. They all measure four centimetres. That's just me being completely, you know, over the top stupid. Um, I just like everything being uniform. Now this is where um, they don't line up properly. This middle signature here um, is slightly higher up. You can see it more on the back here um, than the other two. It lines up here at the top, but um, the, this signature, the outside cover, had obviously um, shifted. So if I did it again, I would really make sure that everything was completely lined up as I wanted it. But you know, that's the only real thing that um, that I wish that um, you know was a bit lower 
down but you know it's good enough so again you know these are all pretty much the same a mixture of my eco dyed papers of course I've chosen um, the nicest ones and for instance this here I just think would look beautiful um, with one of my dried um, pressed flowers um, attached to it so I don't really know um, and I plan on using the watercolour paper um, just for, for sketches I'd like to do a pencil drawing of a flower here and colour it in with um, watercolour paints um, the reason I've got the ruffled edge at the bottom I don't know whether you can see um, this piece here has got the Windsor and Newton watermark um, and of course I wanted that the right way up which meant that I had to have this at the bottom of course I could have cut it up but I just really like that jaggedy um, edge so let's just go through I just love this so much I'm so so glad that I finally got around to putting this together and I can showcase these beautiful um, eco prints. I'm itching now that fall is on its way to start eco dyeing again. Um, and of course I added the um, lace trim on the outside as well. I love how that looks. That's really finished everything off um, really, really nicely. Now I will be adding a closure um, at some stage, but um, I haven't decided what yet. So um, I'll take my time and just, you know, have a think I mean you can see that um, already this is quite chunky I'm not planning on adding any extra bulk really because I'll be drawing and painting in this rather than um, collaging um, but you know I would like some way of being able to um, hold it together now of course I wanted to use my journal to practice with my watercolors more and so I wanted to include a mixture of different types of watercolor paper now I was lucky enough last year to score um, some Windsor and Newton um, sample packs for £1.95 um, per pack and there are seven sheets of watercolour paper in each of these. I think they retail at about £11 or £12 so you can get hold of them but you know I got mine for a bargain price and it just comes with a, a different range of different types of watercolour paper. Some hot pressed, um, some cold pressed, different weights as well. These are really heavy, 640 GSM which is just you know really thick um, and sturdy um, but also some um, thinner ones as well some rough grain um, papers there's one piece of cellulose in the pack but the rest are 100% um, cotton so I've chosen a couple of the thinner sheets from the pack and I've folded one this way and one um, that way um, I decided to leave the ruffled edge just because I like that um, and then a, a couple of people recommended that um, I watercolour on 100% um, cotton paper during the challenge last month as well and so I had a look on Amazon and I ended up buying this pack I think this is 60 sheets of 100% cotton paper it's very thin um, but it got a really great review from a watercolour artist and who said that it was just brilliant for practicing on um, and just far better than any type of cellulose paper I haven't tried it yet um, but I've just folded a sheet of this in half as well so that's what's made up um, my watercolour papers in each of these signatures so this is the lightweight one that I got from Amazon and then this sheet and this sheet here are from the Winsor & Newton set that um, that I got and of course this will just give me the opportunity to try out different types of watercolour paper and just see how they all compare because of course you know watercolour wise I'm still a complete beginner loads and loads more to learn so I hope that's um, helped you um, understand why I put the pages together as I did and, um, you know, explained how I plan on using them. Um, and I hope that um, how I put the signatures together as well wasn't um, too fiddly and complicated. It's so difficult to do these kind of things on screen. But I just really hope that you enjoyed that video. And, um, you know, if you did, I'd always appreciate a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I am absolutely thrilled to bits with this journal. And take care, everyone. I'll be back again soon. Bye for now.